This is Time Rider at Chapter 4. And what you're looking at here is a Matchbox 25C Bedford Tanker. It's a staple in the Matchbox world and came with a yellow tip forward cab, a white tank with sometimes straight VP decals, and a green chassis and hard plastic wheels. It probably never made it into the super fast because of the tip forward cab, uh, and eventually it was replaced by the Leyland cab. But those who know me know that I don't always like to go by the book. It was also released in uh, this version with a blue cab and a blue chassis and a white tank and decals that said Errol, which apparently was what was released in Europe. But anyway, that's what we're going to do today, so here we go. This particular model wasn't in too bad a shape. It has three axles. And it was basically held together with one post. The cab is held on by the tipper axle. Everything on this particular model looked to be in pretty good shape. The paint on the tank looked kind of thick, but I'd get to that in a minute. As with all, first thing to do is drill out the post. This one was pretty easy. Pop it a little here with a screwdriver and it'll come right apart. I was watching another restoration artist and I can't remember who, and that's unfortunate because I sure like to give credit where credit is due. Uh, but rather than taking a Dremel and grinding off one of the mushroomed ends of this pivot shaft, or whatever you want to call it, uh, they actually took a, they took a needle nose, the flat part of a needle nose, and squeezed the narrower mushroom, because uh, all of the Lesney, axle, at Lesney axles have a a large mushroom side and a small mushroom side. So rather than take my Dremel and risk scuffing up part of the casting, I decided to just take a pliers and try to squeeze the mushroom off of the end of this uh, pivot shaft. Uh, now I'm not going to start hammering, it on, hammering on it on the other end, that's just not how I do it. But uh, it certainly was a better way to take this apart that was uh, less opportunity for me to damage the casting itself. And there I got it going a little bit, and boom. Out she comes. Give it a yank with the pliers. And the cab is done. And now that I got it apart, I take a look at everything and make sure nothing's damaged. The interior is a little dirty, but it looks good. The chassis looks to be in really good shape. You know, I love the detail. Little toolbox on the side with a, a padlock. and I'm just going to cut these axles right down the middle. And I'm going to put them together using some hollow steel tube that I bought at the hobby store and I'll kind of cover that a little bit later on. But uh, right now I'm in uh, destruct mode. God knows I liked her to destroy things. This casting looked really good though. All of it. There was no bends, no scuffs, no just chipped up paint from heavy play. 
There was really only one post that needed to be drilled and tapped, and I get asked this a lot. Uh, it's a 1 16th inch drill bit and a 2-56 tap with a 2-56 button screw. I think something important to note too when you're doing this, uh, one, use a little bit of oil, and two, you need to be patient with both the drilling and the tapping and don't try to take it all at once and if you feel the tap starting to tighten up back out a little bit and then start tapping again same thing with the screw when you're putting it in if it feels like it's getting a little tight uh, back out a little bit and then have at it again and of course now you're at the point where you're gonna put some stripper to it. I did this after I did the police car so I had to add a little note there saying the cops were here before. When I did finally get the paint to take off of this it, it was like the uh, the white section had two coats of white. I don't know if that's just something that happened back at uh, Lesney where they were doing it and had to paint it twice or what. And I always liked using a safety pen. I've tried dental picks and they work pretty good. But a safety pen can really get into the crevices of the casting uh, much better than anything else. Sometimes I use a toothpick. It really just depends on what I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, if it's on the edge of a window like that where there's just a very faint place where I can get the tip of that safety pin in there, that's what I do. Once I got all the paint off and I took a good look at the tank, I did notice that there was a little bit of a divot on one side of the top. So I wanted to get a little modeling putty in there, which I uh, smoothed out with the end of this file. And then once it dried, I got after it with some sandpaper and filled it in. And now we're on to the fun stuff. Of course, a uh, little bit of Tamiya light gray primer. Making sure I get the cab from all directions, top, bottom. For the tank, I just use a basic X2 Tamiya White. Trying to be slow and deliberate here and get all sides of it. I know that uh, Traditional wisdom says that you should start light and go dark. And I didn't really have a template from which to uh, mix the paint for the cab and the chassis. But this much I did know. I was not looking for white that was a little blue. I was looking for blue that maybe had a little white. A long, long time ago, I used to work in auto parts and I sold paint products called uh, Ditzler PPG. So, even though these are much smaller cars, this isn't my first uh, rodeo mixing paints. And, yeah, if you go to Menards and you want to buy house paint, they usually start with a base white. And I know there's been some people who posted that that's how you're supposed to do it. Uh, I beg to differ. 
I think if you know the color that you're looking for, you can start anywhere on the spectrum that you want. Uh, and then you can adjust accordingly to get to the hue that you're hoping for. And that's what I did here. I started with a blue, just a basic Tamiya blue, and added white until I got it the color that I wanted. Then I spilled it. No, not really. It didn't didn't really spill. I got a little bit on my stir stick. I was very fortunate this year. My family, uh, knowing how much I love Amazon.com, gave me Amazon gift certificates. And I was able to buy this uh, portable paint booth, which I'll include uh, a link in the description below. And it came with a Lazy Susan. It has a fan uh, to suck the fumes out and a filter. And I bought the helping hands at the same time because I'm always trying to uh, get all sides of something when I paint it. I got to get used to using it though. It's I keep turning the uh, the helping hands and not the lazy Susan. But uh, I'll get it figured out. Uh, the color that I wound up with, uh, it might have been just a a smidge darker than what I was hoping for but I wasn't displeased at all I thought it was a beautiful color and it took a couple of coats to get it where I wanted it to be but I was very very happy with the end result I washed the tires in the interior in some soapy water and I won't bore you with that. And then I made a little tire rack here. I think you've probably seen me do this before if you've watched any of my other restorations. Uh, I needed to make a tire wash, which I do by just putting a few drops of black paint and some thinner into a cup. And it makes a very watery solution that actually dries really quick and uh, I just paint all the tires and it, it I tell you it probably doesn't seem like a big deal but it really really brings the tires back to life and makes them look new and I do both sides and then when I'm doing my assembly what I do is I uh, pick the side of the tire that I like the best I, these matchbox tires are plastic and they're you know 50 years old some of them and they've been played hard in uh, probably not the the best circumstances all the time because kids go where kids go uh, but this this is really the ticket and if I learned only one thing from Marty uh, this was probably one of the most valuable because it's one of those details that uh, yeah you just it's the devil's in the details right um, and this is one of those things that you might not notice, but if the, if the tires look like hell, well, you're going to notice that. And you can kind of see, oh, the, what I did was I bought this steel, so 1 16th hollow steel rod at the hobby store. And I cut a little section of it. And you, if you look at the chassis, you can see there's, the front axle is there, but it looks like it's crooked. But that's because it's not connected. And so I cut it and I flatten the ends off. And then I insert the original axle ends into this steel tube uh, and then I crimp it I 
I also took my first shot at making my own decals. Uh, I found this on the internet, had to do a little cleaning up, I printed it on decal paper and then I covered it in this bonder. I guess you can use hairspray as well, uh, but you have to let it dry for five or six hours, which I did. Um, I'm not going to show the application of the decal uh, just because it was just too fiddly and my hand and head Hands and head were probably in the way. So here once again is how it looked when I started. And I do want to give a shout out to Matchbox Restorations. Uh, he gave me some tips on using a software program called Audacity. Uh, it's free to download and uh, his advice helped me get rid of some of the hiss that I've been experiencing. But anyway, uh, that being said, let's get on to the final reveal. So there you have it. I guess Errol is a large fuel distributor from Germany. I used one of those kit pins uh, to hold the cab on. I'm not going to hammer on something that I've just spent hours and hours painting. Uh, one little slip and you chip the paint, the next thing you know you're painting it all over again. And I'm just not willing to do that. Uh, maybe someday I'll invest in a drill press and then I can use Marty's fix. But until then, there's other ways around it and I'm going to continue to do those. So there you have it. The Matchbox 25C Bedford Fuel Tanker a la Continental Europe. This is Time Rider at Chapter 4. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.